Right now at five, a look at Hurricane Florence's outer bands thrashing the North Carolina coast. Our team of meteorologists is tracking the tropics from the Atlantic all the way to the Gulf. And a tropical disturbance in the Gulf continues to hit Houston with rain. Let's check in with David Paul. It's been a very interesting afternoon. The Hurricane Hunter aircraft has been out flying our tropical disturbance. They've been looking and seeing if they could find a closed center of circulation, a closed low. They actually did, but it's so weak for the moment they're just going to leave it defined as only a tropical disturbance. So it has not been upgraded to a tropical depression or a tropical storm. Looking at the radar, you can see a little bit of a counterclockwise spin out here southeast of Brownsville. If there is a center, that's where it is. Forecast models still take whatever center forms into deep south Texas. This will not be a wind threat, but it will be a rainmaker. So how much rain are we looking at? Well, it looks like Corpus Christi and the coastal bend of Texas will see the heaviest rain threat, maybe five, nine, ten inches of rain. For the immediate Houston, southeast Texas area, two to four inches, but that should be spread out over today, tomorrow, and through Saturday. Maybe some heavier totals, El Campo to Bay City. Meanwhile, Florence is raging off the North Carolina coast. Brooks Garner and I have been watching this all day. Brooks, this is very similar to Ike, whose anniversary is today. Absolutely right, David. Just like Ike was once a cat for geographically a huge storm, so too is Florence. Florence now down to Cat 2. It was a Cat 4. It's a huge storm and it's got a huge surge. This is just the beginning. This is video out of Carolina Beach, North Carolina. So many of the barrier islands getting hit so much harder than this. And this will be a long duration storm. Check out the satellite imagery. It was moving northwest to 10 and then it stopped. And that's very bad because now it's only going to lollygag west toward the coastline. That means a long duration storm surge, battering wave, and rainfall event. Rainfall totals could exceed 40 inches. Winds right now at 105. It's actually up five miles an hour from the last advisories. It's sitting over the warm Gulf Stream. That's not good. You want it to keep weakening. In any sense, it slowly makes its way west by Friday afternoon, by tomorrow afternoon. Maybe it's inland. Not sure yet. The cone then takes it through the PD region of South Carolina, the Midlands, the upstate, and then by early next week, ejects it into the mountains, but not before it dumps between 30 and 40 inches of rain across parts of the Piedmont of North Carolina, maybe even into South Carolina. Anything in this neighborhood is going to cause acute flooding of the likes they've never seen. The most rain they've ever recorded in North Carolina in one event, 24 four inches. Here's a live view from Wilmington. The Cape Hatteras boat there sitting at the dock. Everything's looking okay for now, but that will change. This image is going to get worse as the night goes on, guys. All right, we know you're staying on top of it. Our team will continue to keep a close eye on all these weather systems. You can stay connected on air, online, through the KHOU 11 News app. Elsewhere in the news now, Houston police have hit a wall trying to catch a break in the death of a convenience store clerk in southwest Houston, gunned down trying to defend another employee. And today, David Gonzalez heard from the victim's family for the first time. The only clues that may help crack this case were captured on surveillance cameras like this one. Now authorities and the victim's family hope that you will pay close attention to these surveillance videos with the hopes of identifying the suspects. Surveillance cameras outside and inside the Stop for All food store on McCard Road captured the moment Jose Gomez would make the ultimate sacrifice. In my eyes, my father is a hero and I hate the fact that he's never coming back. That's the part that hurts the most. On July 3rd, Two masked men working together tried to rob the convenience store. Gomez, an almost 20-year employee of the shop, jumped into action. Mr. Gomez did what a lot of people won't do. He attempted to defend the lives of two people that were two customers that were in the store. There was also a clerk behind the counter. Gomez's split-second decision would end up costing him his life. That neighborhood, everyone knew him. You know, I would think that the way the kindness was given to them, that they would return the favor, you know. Um, he didn't deserve this. He, he was ready to retire. HPD believes the suspects fled into the nearby neighborhood. Investigators are hoping someone will recognize the two men and come forward with any information that may help. We have got absolutely nothing on this case, which is why we're here today. We just need one phone call, just one person calling and saying, hey, I think I'm out of who these crooks are, these, these jerks that did this. Right now, they're hoping for just one tip that can lead to an arrest. The store clerk inside the store didn't want to go on camera, but he says this case has definitely affected his business as well. He says he also wants to see these guys captured. If you have any information regarding this incident, you're urged to call Crime Stoppers. Their number is 713-222-TIPS. Reporting in Houston, David Gonzalez, KHOU 11 News.
Today, Cardinal Daniel DiNardo from the Galveston Houston Archdiocese met with the Pope to discuss the church's sex abuse scandal. The Pope is calling for a summit in February, while DiNardo wants outsiders to assist in church investigations. Meanwhile, back here at home, a local priest bonded out of jail just hours ago. Father Manuel La Rosa Lopez is charged with four counts of indecency with a child. Matt Doherty is live in Richmond at St. John Fisher, where that priest was assigned. And Matt, church leaders there met today. Yeah, that's what we understand. Ron, that accused priest was silent as he was escorted from the Montgomery County Jail today. We were there as he was leaving. He was released on a $150,000 bond. Now, we have not seen him return to the campus here of St. John Fisher Church in Richmond. He lives in a residence on the property, but we did see members from the Archdiocese come to the church. We asked the Archdiocese if anyone could be available for an interview, but we still have not heard back. Conroe police say the two alleged victims claim they were abused by the priest about 20 years ago at Sacred Heart Church in Conroe. One alleged victim says it was reported in the year 2000. Then she says she followed up with Cardinal, Cardinal Daniel DiNardo in a meeting in 2010. She claims DiNardo told her the priest was sent to a mental institution and assigned to an administrative position away from children. The second alleged victim told police he met with Cardinal DiNardo last month when he reported for the first time that he was abused from 1998 until 2001. He claims he was told the allegation was reported to Conroe Police by a victim's coordinator with the Archdiocese. However, Conroe Police say they have not been able to locate any record showing any of the allegations were ever reported to authorities. Now, the Archdiocese maintained in a statement yesterday that both of these allegations were reported to authorities. They say they were reported to CPS. The CPS told us they can neither confirm nor deny that either of those cases were ever reported. We're live in Richmond, standing for Houston, Matt Doherty, KHU 11 News. To breaking news happening now in the Northeast, more than a dozen homes caught fire in a series of suspected gas explosions. Massachusetts State Police are evacuating several blocks in two different towns. Police responded to more than 20 confirmed home fires or explosions. Officials say it's too early to speculate on an exact cause. We'll have updates for you both on the KHU mobile app and website. A sudden illness forced LaPorte ISD elementary students to evacuate. Students from College Park were taken to Heritage after two staff members became sick. At last check, no students showed symptoms and the all clear was given for students to return tomorrow. Today, loved ones said a final farewell to Botham Jean, the man killed by an off-duty Dallas police officer who says she entered the wrong apartment and confused Jean for an intruder. God gave the world this young, energetic, smart, educated, talented young man of God. If you came with Hundreds attended his funeral celebrating the man who loved to sing. The officer, Amber Geiger, is charged with manslaughter. Your comments are scrolling at the bottom of the screen. Hundreds poured in after President Trump denied Hurricane Maria killed nearly 3,000 people in Puerto Rico, the island's official death toll. He wrote on Twitter, quote, this was done by the Democrats in order to make me look as bad as possible when I was successfully raising billions of dollars to help rebuild Puerto Rico. A devastating storm surge destroyed much of the Bolivar Peninsula 10 years ago today, an area along the Gulf very similar to the Outer Banks of the Carolinas. Jason Miles live from Bolivar with more on this anniversary. Jason. Hey there, Ron. Of course, the Carolina is getting hit as we speak. Today, September 13th, is a day many here on Bolivar will never forget. Many homes, businesses have been rebuilt, rebuilt in the last decade. This hotel here behind me, though, as you can see, has never reopened since being severely damaged in Hurricane Ike. Take a look at some video from the aftermath of Ike back in 2008. As you know, the storm surge itself reaching 20 to 25 feet here on the peninsula. That's in addition to the hurricane's winds, which damaged property all over the Houston area. Entire neighborhoods here in Bolivar wiped from the peninsula altogether. But a decade later, hundreds of homes have been rebuilt to stricter standards, I might add. Businesses have bounced back as well. The Chamber of Commerce president, who's also a longtime resident here, says the recovery process still continuing 10 years later. Uh, I think in the long run, if we have another storm, we'll have more houses that survive. And hopefully people too? Correct. 
Flanagan says a lot of rebuilt properties have gone from basically weekend type cabins to nice big homes. And the number of people who vacation here in Bolivar has increased a lot since Ike as well. The storm 10 years ago killed two of Flanagan's neighbors and about 111 other people across the U.S. Of course, Flanagan says they're still kind of getting things going even this many years later. Of course, many of the same areas impacted by Ike, impacted by Harvey just a year ago. Go to KHOU.com for many more remembrances and pictures even before and after photos from Hurricane Ike. Back to you. Wow, hard to believe it's already been 10 years. I have vivid memories of that storm. Thank you so much, Jason. Well, right now we're in the peak of hurricane season and things are still active in the Gulf and the Atlantic. Coming up, David Paul will be tracking it all, but first, dozens of cars stolen daily. The two models Houston police say thieves target the most and why an older vehicle could put you more at risk. And something new coming to Pearland. You love Killen's barbecue, mm -hmm. don't you? But get ready for something new on your plate. Hungry to know more? Tracking the disturbance in the Gulf, I'll talk about what that means for Houston on KJU 11 News this morning. And it's a rain threat as we track this disturbance toward the Texas coast. Heaviest stuff should fall Friday and Saturday. We're tracking it with you all the way. Need something verified? Email verify at khou.com. Hey, Audrey, why the heck are these prescriptions so expensive? Congress refused to let Medicare negotiate for lower drug costs. Really? Even our congressman? His name is John Culberson, and yes, he voted with the drug companies. Now why would he do that? Culberson received over $115,000 in contributions from the drug industry and also voted to give drug companies a billion-dollar tax break. Oh, really? Well, bless his heart. Are you living your best life? Is your body trying to tell you something? Do you live with vitality or illness? Are you managing stress? Are you thriving or just surviving? To learn how to age healthier and live happier, find a certified provider at bioteamedical.com. Ulysses, his sister Molly, Henry who's seven, I want to be there with them, but more importantly, I want to anticipate the question that they're going to ask me in the years to come. When everything that mattered to us was on the line, where were you? Let's meet the pettiness, the bigotry, the anxiety that dominates so much of national life today with a courage, a strength, a big heart that could only be born of Texas. I'm Beto O'Rourke and I approve this message. At KHOU 11, we stand for Houston, and that means standing for the truth. We're going to talk about a few things our viewers keep asking us about, so we want to make sure you know exactly what he's saying. Verify, only on KHOU 11 News. All right, think about this. Thieves in Houston are stealing 20 to 40 cars per day and they're targeting two types of vehicles more than any other. HPD's Auto Theft Division is tracking the trend and telling our Josh Marshall what you can do to protect your ride. Houston's top 10 stolen cars in August. Take a guess. Chevy pickups. Definitely imported cars like Honda. Chevy trucks are at the top of the list, being stolen more than 250 times. Ford trucks are in second, about 100 thefts behind. Crooks stole the two automakers as truck lines more than all other Houston stolen vehicles combined. We asked HPD Auto Theft Division Sergeant Tracy Hicks why. He says, number one, crooks need a truck for their next crime. You see these guys that crash through buildings or the front doors of a CVS. Um, you use a truck to do that. Two, to get away off-road. So what they do a lot of times is they run cross country. So you have to have a bigger truck to be able to make it. Three, they're easy to steal. You're actually about 10 times more likely going to have your older vehicle stolen. And there's a lot of Chevy and Ford trucks on the road. Tahoes and Suburbans are considered 
Chevy trucks. Protection devices like alarms, vehicle trackers, and clubs are all options you can pay for out of pocket. And uh, HPD offers their own free solution. We'll take your VIN number with a stencil maker, is actually make a stencil, and we put your VIN number on all six pieces of your glass. Making it harder for thieves to steal and sell your car under a fake title. What it does is it makes your car a whole lot less desirable to a thief. Combining these safety features could keep your car off HPD's next top 10 stolen list. In Houston, Josh Marshall, KHOU 11 News. Good advice there, and if you want to find out when and where you can have HPD etch your windows, just click on the story on KHOU.com. That's a great idea. Tonight, we want your take. A psychology professor at U of H says middle child syndrome doesn't actually exist, and a new study says middle children are well-adjusted and often independent. We want your take. We, we're asking you in our unofficial poll to vote. Visit KHOU.com or open our free app. Right now, over half of you say, yes, I am one, or I know someone who is. Mm. There you go. So the public thinks differently. Okay, so he has been teasing fans for weeks, and now Chef Ronnie Killen confirms it's true. He's going Tex-Mex. The famed barbecue master is opening a new restaurant in Pearland Silver Lake Plaza, just five miles away from Killen's Barbecue. The menu includes brisket enchiladas and yes. ragu beef fajitas. Mm. TMX is expected to open in November. Hungry now, aren't you? Yeah, it'll be Taco Tuesday every day. <laughs> there you go. One Houston hotel is rising to the top, earning the coveted AAA five diamond rating. The Post Oak Hotel at Uptown earned the rating within just six months of opening. Owned by billionaire Tillman Fertitta, the 38 story tower boasts a two story Rolls Royce showroom, as well as six restaurants and bars. How about that? Hey, we want to share with you some growth for us here at KHOU. The signs are now up at our Avenida studio at the George R. Brown Convention Center. We're excited to start broadcasting from the new satellite studio in the coming weeks. There you go. Look at that KHOU 11 sign. Looking good. All shiny and new there. Yeah. Let me tell you. All the concerts, all the shows. Yeah. We're going to be right there with a front row seat. It'll be great to see folks out there just outside the window joining us when we're live. And, and today it's a good day to be inside that window. Rain mm -hmm. across the area. It's because of this disturbance we've been tracking, but so far it hasn't developed anywhere past being a disturbance. You guys see that orange X? Bottom left of the screen. Thank you, Ron. Thank you for acknowledging it. So the Hurricane Hunter aircraft has been flying out here today. They sent a mission. They flew around. They're looking for a closed circulation near the surface. If that happens, that's a sign of, of greater organization. And they actually found a very weak closed circulation, so weak that they didn't upgrade it to a tropical depression. They're leaving it as a tropical disturbance. That's the lowest rung on the totem pole. You can see a little bit of circulation out here. That's well southeast of Padre and Brownsville. So that's gonna move on inland. That'll be the center. But as always with these things, the east side, the right-hand side to motion is the dirty side. So here's where all the rain is, middle Texas coast, and Houston, Upper Texas Coast, getting a lot of rain on the uh, coast today. And inland moisture with the heat of the afternoon has fired off a, a broken batch of scattered showers and a couple of flashes of lightning and claps of thunder uh, living to Huntsville to College Station. That should weaken pretty quickly. In fact, I think a lot of this is going to settle down pretty quickly tonight between 6 o'clock and going into 11 o'clock tonight. Just a few sprinkles out there. However, tomorrow morning, what are your plans? You got to get up early tomorrow, doctor appointment, school, man. 5.30 a.m. The rain starts on the coast. It will be heavy at times. There is a flash flood watch for the coast, so we're watching for that as well. A sound rush 4.30 to 7. We'll be tracking it. And then we continue to get a chance for a few rain bands during the day and the afternoon on Friday. But as we go into Friday night and Saturday, you can see how near the loosely organized center of what there is goes inland. That's where the real heavy rain is expected to be. So Corpus Christi, the coastal bend, has a better chance of seeing flash flooding, maybe four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten inches of rain and poss possible in some of those spots. Saturday afternoon, we could get one of the little outer bands skirt by the area, so we'll have to watch it, but maybe just two, three inches of rain the most we'll get here in the Houston area, two to four, with the heavy stuff near Corpus Christi and the coastal bend. We have had a lot of rain southwest county, so three to six inches could cause some flash flooding there. That's why the watch is up. Hurricane Florence is very similar to Ike, whose 10-year anniversary is today. That and the fact that 
Both were Cat 4 at one time. They both weakened to Cat 2. Uh, Hurricane Florence is currently a Cat 2, but like Ike, it has a Cat 4 surge. That means they could see 15 feet of surge in some of these spots. Where's the worst of the surge right now? It's where the onshore flow winds are. North of Cape Lookout, it is very fortunate that this stretch of islands is very uninhabited. This stretch, where at the moment they're getting offshore winds, Moorhead City, Emerald Isle, tons of houses here. They're still getting damaged, but at the moment, the worst of it is on a good spot, if there is a good spot for a 15-foot storm surge. Uh, forecast continues to show this thing working its way down the coast to, into South Carolina, and so devastating 30, 40 inch rain totals are possible in some spots in the Carolinas. Now, don't forget Isaac. We're watching it. Isaac is really looking ragged. It may or may not hold together into the Caribbean, weakens to a disturbance, and we'll keep an eye on that together as we move through the next several days. 84 tomorrow, 70% rain chance. Again, good chance for rain on Saturday as well. And then rain chances begin to taper down. I don't, I can't take them all completely out, but back to normal stuff. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Normal stuff. And look at the low there on Thursday. 73. Am Burr. I reading that right? Burr. Come on. Bring it on. Yes. Thank you, Dave. Coming up on KHOU 11 News at 6 for the first time, we are hearing from the male student disciplined for wearing makeup to school. Why he says this was a long overdue discussion that he needed to have with school leaders. And next, we take you to Fort Bend, where one young man is proof the kickers do deserve the glory. We are the TV Doctors of America, and we may not know much about medicine, but we know a lot about drama. We also know that you can avoid drama by getting an annual checkup. So go, know, and take control of your health. It could save your life. Cigna, together, all the way. Jack Mormon is making a difference. As our Harris County Commissioner, Jack Mormon has made job creation and economic growth the top priority. Jack Mormon is enhancing our parks and community centers to improve our quality of life. And as a tireless advocate for flood victims, Jack Mormon is fighting for a comprehensive flood control plan for Harris County that will protect our homes. Jack Mormon, making a difference for all of us. We've been friends for years, and let me tell you, she's one tough customer. I research everything. So when she hired Bathfitter, I had to know more. Turns out, Bathfitter has been putting new tubs over existing ones for almost 35 years. That means you're not ripping out your old tub, so there's no big mess. And you don't have to go days without your bathroom. Plus, it's guaranteed for life. And when I saw how beautiful it looked, Bathfitter had another customer. Book your free in-home consultation today. Call or visit bathfitter.com. It's finally here. The Ross Fall Fashion Event has the brands you want. No. Yes. At oh yes prices. Like that handbag for wait, how much? What? Or that cute jacket that says check me out at a price that makes you say? Check this out. That's yes for less. Find your new fall look at the Ross Fall Fashion Event. Ross has the trends you want and the brands you love. And it feels even better when you find them for less. Get to the Ross Fall Fashion Event. Yes for less. Lizzie Fletcher defended a company who spilled 140,000 gallons of crude along the coast, and she made hundreds of thousands of dollars. She supported Nancy Pelosi, who is bankrolling Lizzie's campaign. Lizzie Fletcher supports Obamacare, amnesty for illegal immigrants, and raising our taxes. Lion Lizzie Fletcher says she's looking out for you, but she's always just been in it for herself. NRCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. Tonight's Athlete of the Week is kicking things up a notch. Daniel Gotera takes us to Bush High School in Fort Bend to meet the young man who carried the team during week one of high school football. A kicker's life can be lonely, yet Wilfredo Guzman doesn't see it that way. I feel very loved. I feel like I can be dependent upon now. And he's earned it, especially after his game one performance. Wilfredo scoring all the points for Bush High School in a 9-7 victory, including a game winner from 45 yards out. Before I even kicked it, everybody was like, oh, you got this, you got this. Everybody on the sideline before I kicked it. And just making it make, made me feel proud of myself. He's a part of our offense, so uh, if we can get it close enough, you know, he's going to put it in. His first passion was soccer, but football came calling. And when I got to middle school, uh, I started playing football. I tried out as a wide receiver, and then we needed a kicker. 
so I stepped up. On the varsity team since sophomore year, he has now blossomed into a left-footed threat. Toughest part is probably they expect a lot from me. They, but that's what I like. They love him. I mean, and they knew, you know, that at the end of last year because we lost a lot on offense. That you know it was going to take us a while to get the offense going, but they knew that Wilfredo was going to be a big part of that. The future, well, football-wise, it's up in the air, just like his kicks. Career-wise, something in business seems to be just fine. I'm good with math, and it's just natural. Like, like kicking is just natural to me. Who says kickers don't get any love? Well, I know for one thing, this team loves Wilfredo. Congratulations, man, for being our Athlete of the Week. Thanks to the folks at Texas Mattress Makers. Thank you. Oh! And we haven't seen Daniel since. <laughs> right. Hey, to nominate coach. someone for Athlete of the Week, send an email to sports at khou.com. We should try that yeah, at the should, end of the yeah. newscast. <laughs> Come on, newsroom. All right, spicing things up, how a popular candy is adding jalapeno to its chocolate. Jalapeno.